Looking to get your Cisco CCNA this year? Well, today on the IT Career Podcast, we have Jeff Kiss joining us, who is a CBT Nuggets trainer and is one of the trainers involved in the Ultimate CCNA course through CBT Nuggets. So without further ado, let's welcome Jeff to the show. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, it's great to be here, Dakota. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. And uh, yeah, thank you for taking the time to come on the channel and talk about all the great work you do. Yeah, very happy to be here. Very excited for what you do on this channel and happy to be a part of it. Awesome. Well, for those who don't know you, do you mind taking a few minutes and kind of introducing yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Jeff, Jeff Kish. I have been a CBT Nuggets trainer for about five years and my cat just about knocked my webcam off. Sorry about that. So she's probably going to try to make a guest appearance here in a moment. But I have been uh, in the networking industry for, golly, close to 20 years at this point. Been doing a lot of routing and switching, wireless and data center. Uh, those would be my specialties. So if I can ever get my hands on those technologies, then I'm a pretty happy guy. So <laughs> there we go. Did not know she was in my office when I started this. So um, yeah, I got my career started not knowing who Cisco was. I was hired by a Cisco, de uh, a Cisco partner. Uh, they had me just screwing in screws, hanging access points, and I just leaned on the um, the senior engineers to teach me why we were doing the things we were doing and what what is this company Cisco all about? And um, I worked pretty hard. I saw the certifications as an opportunity to advance my career. I got my CCNA within a year. I got my CCNP within three and my CCIE within five. So I went very fast, but very aggressively after those certifications. And I've been fortunate to uh, be able to move into an industry that allows me to help other people get those certifications as well. That is, that's so crazy. Like that's an extreme, it seems, at least to me, you know, accelerating going from CCNA all the way to CCIE. You know, um, most of the people here watching, I'm sure are understanding what the CCIE is, but when you really start digging down into the training on like how much that takes to do, that is a crazy certification. Um, but today we are talking about Cisco CCNA. And, you know, many people realize the CCNA is a really great certification to get into the networking world, but don't necessarily realize what it takes to successfully study for the CCNA and the different tools and stuff you need to um, really absorb the knowledge. Do you mind kind of talking about that for a little bit? Sure. I, I mean, I think everybody's certification process looks different. I mean, any Cisco certification, you've got to find the right balance between being book smart and being street smart, if we want to call it that. But, you know, you've got to have your hands on the equipment. And it also depends on where you're starting. Are you doing this every day? Are you, you know, working a side job and you want to get into IT? Well, there's a difference between the amount of studying you have to do if you're not doing this all day and just trying to learn it at home versus, yeah, at least I'm doing networking or IT all day and and then I can go home and also study up. So um, as far as tools are concerned, you know, I mean, I'm I'm a pretty simple guy. If you give me some some videos to watch and especially like a Cisco press book, uh, I've I've long built all of my certification studies around those two tools um, and then just give me some lab equipment. And then again, for everyone, you just got to find that balance as far as getting your hands on the equipment and memorizing the facts you have to memorize. You better know OSPF has an administrative distance of 110, for example, um, and finding which facts you really need to spend time memorizing versus just, you know, hey, I've actually configured this. So when they ask me what's missing from a config, I can look at it and tell you. No, absolutely. And, you know, I, I studied for the CCN a long time ago, back in high school, back in the Netacad days where oh, high school, you nice. Yeah, high school. Yeah, it was really cool, um, you know, and back in high school, you know, it was one of those things where you got your CCNA and it was really kind of guaranteed job placement. You know, you would come out of high school with a CCNA and like the world was open to you, like everyone wanted to talk to you. And um, but it was a lot more difficult back then to study for the CCNA. We didn't have, you know, um, you know, we had packet tracer technically. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, access to real world equipment and stuff just wasn't as tangible as it is today. And there really wasn't many options when it came to like 
um, third party certification trainers. Um, mm, you know, yeah. there was Cisco Netacat and that was about it. You know, there's a couple books out there. Um, but me, I've never much of been a book reader. I've been a hands-on type of guy. And, um, one of the things I tell everyone when they're studying for the Cisco CCNA is to like practice hands-on practical training, you know, mm -hmm. get into a lab environment of some kind and um, really would love to hear your input and take on that. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, I think everybody needs to find that balance for themselves. I've been on both sides of the equation as far as, oh, I spent too much time studying from a book and not enough time in the lab. That was my CCNP experience, especially was I, I went and I took the test and I realized I need to be more in the lab. But then ironically, when I was studying for the CCIE written, which is no longer a thing, but 10 years ago it was, um, when I was studying for that, I actually found that I spent too much time in the lab, which was funny. We'd say, well, CCIE, you're supposed to. Well, for the written exam, they really wanted you to memorize a lot of facts. And so I had spent so much time in the lab that I didn't have all of my facts down and I had to spend more time in the book. So for the CCNA, I, I really think it's, again, everybody's going to be a little bit different from where they're starting and where they are. And uh, you've just got to find out, okay, well, do I need to spend more time again, memorizing those tables and understanding like really how a technology is supposed to be working? Because depending on the technology, you can sometimes configure a, <laughs> I know this cat, uh, every, <laughs> You can take, configure a technology sometimes in, in five commands, right? And so memorizing the configuration is really easy. But what are those five commands doing? Well, that's book time, right? Versus something that maybe is a little bit more difficult to configure, but overall, it's pretty simple in its implementation. No, oh, absolutely. And, you know, <laughs> I, love, I love the cat there in the background. Oh, yeah. She's, she's a sweetheart. Yeah. yeah but you know um that's a very good point that i don't think you know a lot of people really um think about you know when studying for the ccna you know you really have to kind of balance it out and mm -hmm. you know that's why one reason like i tell people you know you know take your you know everyone wants to rush through get their ccna so they can move on to the next certification mm -hmm. but i think it's really important to make sure you take the time and understand the actual certification um, you know, you, you should be studying to learn the material, not to pass the exam necessarily as well, though. Yeah, I mean, that sounds good on paper. At some point, you do have to put the focus into pass. And yeah. so, yeah, I want to be I mean, there's two types of approaches, right? It can just be I just got to pass the certification and I want this on my resume so I can get a better job. And that's fantastic. And I think sometimes we, we try to put a negative spin on that that says, well, you don't want to be a paper tiger. Well, Paper Tiger is just somebody who goes out and memorizes answers or whatever, and, and you really can't back it up. But there is a, a place for saying, okay, I, I, I can do this, and, and I, you know, I can do this for my job, and yet I'm not passing the CCNA. Why is that? Well, because at some point you do have to sit down and say, this is not going to make me a better engineer, but I've got to study these facts. I've got to study these topics that maybe I'll never touch in my life. And, and that will help me pass the exam. So I always try to avoid a little bit of, of that sense of, well, I want to be a better engineer, so I need to understand this in depth. Yes, but at some point, you also need to pass the certification because you might have a, a help desk job today and you go get your CCNA. Well, guess what? That's going to get you a CCNA level job with CCNA level experience, and that's going to make you a better engineer as well. So don't sure. cheat the process. Don't just memorize things and try to pass an exam and get a job you're not qualified for. But don't hesitate to say, okay, I don't necessarily understand OSPF as deep as I want, but <laughs> I can, you know, do I understand it well enough to pass and get a job where I'm managing OSPF? And, and that's right. the balance. There's no perfect balance, but it's at least something to consider in your journey. No, absolutely. And, you know, one thing I did when I was studying for my CCNA is I created myself some flashcards because mm -hmm. for some reason I had a real trouble. Like I knew in day-to-day -day life, you're not going to be expected to remember most port numbers. Okay. Let's just be honest. Port, right. port numbers right. and protocols, exactly. you're never going to, that's what Google is for. Mm -hmm. But for the exam, you're going to need to know some of that stuff as well. Yeah. So 
for some reason it was just difficult for me like you know i always hear people say oh subnetting is the most scary thing subnetting for me was easy it's just mm -hmm. i learned differently but remembering what port numbers were you know just the simplest of things like ftp or you know S yeah. uh, ssh or whatever it, it just wasn't clicking so i just did flashcards and stuff like that mm -hmm. now you mentioned something interesting you know you're talking about people right now might have a help desk level job. And once you pass a CCNA, you're gonna have a CCNA level, you know, experience to be able to get a CCNA level job. Do you think it's possible for someone with, you know, no prior work experience to be able to take the CCNA and be able to jump straight into like a networking level position without doing time on the help desk? What's your opinion on that? Um, I think, it's a tricky question. I mean, I think when we frame some of those scenario types of questions, it's it's a little bit of a shallow, like we're trying to create a scenario where like it covers everybody. Like no, not everybody's going to be the same type of person, the same type of engineer. If you're not in an IT role and you want to get into IT, studying for and passing your CCNA is really about the only thing. You, now you could go for like a lower level cert, like a network plus, for example, um, there was a time where I would have said, don't pass the CCNA, go get the CSENT, right? Um, right? Because the CSENT was a step into that. And that would put you a little bit, maybe make you a little bit more of a hireable um, candidate. So I have been fortunate enough to also be in a position where I'm hiring people, I'm doing technical interviews. And there is something to be said about, you know, from my perspective, I'm, I'm looking at resumes and I see somebody has a CCNA with zero work experience. That might be a red flag. And, you know, maybe we say, well, okay, it would have been better just to have submitted without it. But at the same time, I might look at that and say, oh, you're driven. You know, I've got somebody who, who has been in the industry for five years and they have zero certs. You have not been in the industry at all and you have a CCNA. So from my perspective, I would say, I'm gonna give you a technical interview and if you can prove that you have a CCNA level of knowledge, I'd rather hire you than the person who has been in the industry for five years and shown no growth. So long story short, that's a very long winded way of saying we can't control every scenario. There will be hiring managers who say, oh, I would never hire somebody like that. And there are hiring managers like when, when I was in that role that I would have been very interested in having a conversation with you because it just depends on where you put the value. That's a good way to to look at it. And, um, you know, I, I I am a in my day job, I'm a director of network operation mm -hmm. and I'm also a hiring person. We literally just I just hired someone Thursday for an IT support specialist uh, position that also is going to be working within the network operation center. Mm -hmm. And um, and honestly, the person really didn't have much prior job experience. But one thing I did notice when I was interviewing the person, they really just had that that drive to learn and, you know, that passion for technology. And I think that's something, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people get overlooked that, um, the importance of having that desire. Um, you know, there is some people I think that get into the field that feel like, oh, I'm going to get into networking because I want to make a lot of money. Um, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a tech job, you know, want to get into tech yeah. jobs and that that's really apparent. Um, in an interview, you know, the yeah. hiring managers, typically can see right through that. Um, but I want to dive more into training for the CCNA. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are some of the the most important um, like tips you have to like really try to start cementing that knowledge in further? You know, um, you know, a lot of times people are working a day job um, and they're just trying to study in their free time and don't have a lot of time to devote. Yeah. You know, how can they really set themselves up for success? Well, I'm a big believer in balance. I have a lot of certifications to my name and and they have all come just over time, slow and steady. Uh, again, the CCNA, I, it sounded like I was very aggressive with those certifications and on some level, certainly I was. But I mean, my CCNA prep was about five months. And then when I passed, I took a bunch of time off and I didn't really start take, prepping the CCNP. I took another couple of minor exams in the meantime, but I didn't start prepping my CCNP until I wanna say it was about two, no, about a year and a half later. So I took like about a year and a half off between my NA and my NP. And so over the course of time, if you're taking that amount of time off between certifications, 
then you still end up having a pretty good resume of, of certs. Now within a cert, like if you're going to just say, okay, well, I'll worry about NP and <laughs> beyond later, just help me get my CCNA. Again, it is about the balance. You need to find a realistic study schedule that you're going to be able to stick to. You know, we all want to believe that, oh, I can study for two hours a day, six or seven days a week. And it's just not necessarily the case. It depends on your life situation um, from, I mean, I got married pretty much right after I got into the industry. I've always had my wife. I've, I mean, I was studying for these sorts with really young kids and I, you know, my kids are a little bit older now, but I still have to go study for certifications. You, they need you, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer in family first and your family has to be Absolutely. on board or at least understand what you're doing and, but make the sacrifice yours. You know, I would come home and I would spend time with my wife and my kids. And so once my kids were in bed, that was my study time because normally it'd be like, well, that would be my watch TV time, play video games time, my relaxation time. Well, I wanted the sacrifice to be mine. So if that means it's an hour a night, if it means it's a half hour a night, whatever fits into that window, um, that's that's what you do. And you set that goal. And the time it takes is the time it takes at that point. I mean, some people can knock the CCNA out in three months. Some people it take six months. Some people it takes a year. But it depends a lot on your starting position. It depends on how much time you can, again, realistically put in over the course of time. And just make sure that you're putting plenty of break time in there as well. So you, you your family shouldn't have to not see you on the weekends, right? You should be available. Right. You should Absolutely. be around. And if that, you know, I, I think for CCNA, if you can commit to somewhere around 10 hours a week, so that would be maybe an hour a night during the week, and then maybe somehow get another four or five hours in on the weekend. I think that's, that, that's a really solid schedule. And if you can't quite do that, that's perfectly fine. You just find what works for you. No. And that is so true. You know, what, what I did is, you know, I'd pick like two or three days a week and I would like, I literally, I put it in my calendar. You know, like I'm going to schedule for 45 minutes after, right after I get home from work, like just the, the kids and the wife mm -hmm. knew like Mondays and Wednesdays, I came home from work and I'm going to go straight into the yeah. office and I'm going to study for 45 minutes, you know, just pretend I'm still at work. And that's what, I, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it's rough and there's going to be days that you just want to come home and flip on Netflix and just sit back and relax. But, um, you have to stay diligent. I think, um, uh, another thing I did is I went ahead and uh, as soon as I decided I was going to study for my CCNA, I went out and scheduled my exam in advance. And, mm -hmm. uh, that way I, I knew that like I was, I, I already paid, you know, I bought my voucher. I'm not going to let it go to waste. I'm going to go get my CCNA. Um, to be, actually, I didn't do that with the CCNA because I was in high school for that one, but I've done that with mm -hmm. other certifications. Um, yeah. But I think that's a really good tip. Um, now, I actually want to take a few minutes and talk about the new CCNA course that CBT Nuggets just uh, created because you know I've been hearing all this hype around this ultimate CCNA course. And <laughs> can you give us a sneak peek of what makes it so ultimate? Yeah, I mean, I one thing that we we have tried really hard with C, uh, with CBT is to give you a little bit more of a one stop shop for studying because I think that video courses can be let's say thirty or forty hours, and that sounds great. Other than I just said that you should be studying for about maybe ten hours a week, and so thirty or forty hours is going to give you you know, maybe a month or a month and a half, and it takes you know maybe longer to study because. It, and what that does when the video course is lighter is it it puts more on you to figure it out, right? Like you might watch a video of somebody explaining OSPF and the OSPF overview is done in an hour and a half or two hours. And two hours of OSPF is not enough, right? We need more time. And yes, there's time in the lab, but the reality is that that's the point where you crack out the Cisco press book and you really read the details because in a video series, the the tendency is that trainers will not necessarily go into all the details. And of course, you don't have a the ability to just directly ask them questions and, and figure things out that way. And so what we've tried to do with this ultimate CCNA course is give a much more in-depth approach. So yes, there's more time involved, but it's supposed to give a learner the ability to sit down 
and review the CCNA through CBT Nuggets and have pretty much all of your questions answered. And so it will take you a little bit longer to go through OSPF, but in a very good way, because we're not glossing over the details. We're trying to give every detail that uh, is required. I make sure that anytime I'm going to teach a course, I go take that course. I'm sitting here with two CCIEs and I went and I took the CCNA because I wanted to see, hey, what does Cisco expect? You know, what, what are we learning here? And I'm not going to turn around and say what I saw on the CCNA because of NDA, but I want to make sure that our content is matching the depth of knowledge that's on there. And so that's exactly the goal is to say, hey, you've got to know OSPF to this level. So I'm not going to teach it halfway and let you figure out the rest. I'm going to give you as much of that as I can. And, and no course is ever going to be perfect. There will be a detail here or there that you might say, oh, okay, well, I need to memorize this or whatever. But at the same time, we're hoping that it's a little bit more of that, you know, completeness feeling. When you when you get done with a subject that you feel like, okay, I know this subject because Keith or Jeff or John, you know, these are the, <laughs> the three instructors at CBT who put this together that because they covered it at enough depth, enough depth that, um, that it, I know it. And what you're going to find is that the CBT course is longer than both our previous course, as well as some of the other courses that are out there. But the if you can commit to it, you're going to know this material really, really well by the end of it. So that is why we're calling it the ultimate CCNA course is because we want it to be the last CCNA stop for you to say, this is where you come to study. And by the time you're done, you should know this pretty well. That's really cool because, you know, I used to tell people that you don't just rely on one study resource for studying for the CCNA mm -hmm. because many uh, other online training platforms would just give you what the exact bit of information you need to know to be able to pass the exam, but right. really want to go into depth on topics. And there are certain topics that I found really interesting when studying for certifications that I want to learn more, but mm -hmm. a lot of different platforms will just teach for the exam, not necessarily for the skills right. and stuff. So um, that's one thing I think is really interesting. Now, to get a little bit off topic, there was actually a question asked, what about the CCST? I don't think CBT Nuggets really covers the CCST. But uh, we do. Do you have a person? You do? Oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah, Even yeah, better. We do. But <laughs> what, what is your take on the Cisco, cert uh, Cisco Certified Support Technician Certificate? Yeah, I think the CCST is a great way to, okay, so go back to that scenario where you said that, you know, you're not in IT and you need to study for a certification. The CCNA is a big, big step. Um, and that's something I, I probably should have brought up because the CSENT, I liked the CSENT model. I really did. I, I'm disappointed they got rid of the CSENT from the perspective that the CCNA is I mean, like you're going up the stairs and and like they took out the two, first two stairs, right? So can you step from the bottom of the stairs up to this level? You're going to have to really stretch your leg versus that C-Cent gave you the, 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 the half step, right? And so they got rid of that. And so Cisco is saying, basically, you're expected to get here on your own and then you go for the CCNA. So that's where, to me, the CCST plays. Uh, I... Being honest, I like when I was hiring and, and Dakota, you've you're in this role more recently than I am. I I didn't ever ask about the CCSTs at the time they were called the CCTs, but right. um, it's one of these things where we might. I guess I don't know what the value is to hiring managers. It might be one of those things that at least says, "Hey, you're working towards certifications," and it also doesn't block me as a hiring manager from saying, "Okay, I I want to pay." I want to hire you as a CCNA, but I don't trust that you have the experience. So it might be a nice middle ground. Ultimately, if you feel like the CCNA is a big step, that's where I think the CCSTs um, that, that they play really well in. You know, I really felt feel that it's, um, you know, everyone's experience is different, you know, mm -hmm. and some people like, like you said, the CCNA is a big step for people that don't maybe have that fundamental knowledge in the technology field. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so the oh, go ahead. Oh, I just want to toss out there too. If anybody has any questions, I'm I'm happy to go off the beaten path here, wherever we want to go. With uh, it. Absolutely. Um, one reason we're doing it live, right? So yeah, Ab please, absolutely. Please ask. Yeah, yeah, and then 
you know, as of the job aspect, you know, the hiring aspect of the CCST, um, you know, working in a network operations center for an ISP, um, the CCST to me doesn't feel like you quite have enough knowledge for um, maybe a networking engineering position. You, you know, right. maybe yeah. that's a that's a gateway to get you into like the help desk or a very entry level junior level position. Um, but I think if you really want to you know, stretch into a higher, you know, level role. The CCNA is like kind of the bare minimum. Yeah. Now, along that lines, what about the CCNP? Um, you know, I've heard it more commonly because you used to not be able to do this. You used right. to have to get prerequisites, you know, there's prerequisites for these exams. Now, if tomorrow I want to go take the CCIE exam, Cisco's like, I'll take your money. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, what do you think about, you know, just jumping straight into that higher level certification sure. if you have some previous experience? You know, yeah. I, I definitely don't recommend like, you know, someone that's completely green in the field to go for that. But right. maybe you are doing a networking engineering position already. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's too much of a stretch to jump straight into CCI, uh, NP? No, not at all. Um, and fun fact, actually, Cisco has never had any prerequisites on the CCIE other than passing the written. So I actually had a coworker who um, his first Cisco certification, I think maybe in 10 years at least, uh, maybe ever, was the CCIE. But he had 15 years of experience doing voice deployments and he went out and he passed the CCIE lab and that was his only certification. So CCIE is a little different because Cisco's opinion was at the time like, well, if you can pass the lab exam, then that's good enough, right? But the CCNP, like you said, they still required the NA, and now they've gotten rid of that. I will say, generally speaking, I don't advise going down that path and skipping certifications. Um, even for me, when I got my data center IE, I, I went and as a route switch CCIE and doing massive data center deployments, I still went out and passed the NA data, CCNA data center when it was a thing. Then I went and passed the CCNP data center. Then I got the CCIE written and, and the lab exam after that. And the primary reason I did that was just to make sure that I had a good foundation because I don't want to go all the way out to a, I don't want to go try to take a CCNP course. And there's just something there that I just don't have based on my real world experience. So I eased myself up to the CCIE, if you want to call it that, by making sure I passed all of those. So the one place where I would say absolutely go for it is if you have at least three to five years of experience, because like you said, I promise you as a hiring manager, I would never hire a CCNP who has zero experience. Like that's just not a thing, right? Yeah. Um, even if you have one year of experience in the CCNP, I'm I'm going to really drill you on the technical interview to, to make sure that like, okay, do you really know this? Because it's going to be a little bit suspicious. Um, but if you've got that three to five years of experience and you just say, hey, I don't want to, my, my question is always why? Right. Why wouldn't you just go past the CCNA? If you're really if the CCNA is like below you or beneath you, then it should be really easy for you to pass. And right. you need that knowledge to pass the CCNP anyways. If it's Jeff, the NA is expensive then and I don't want to spend the money. I think that's perfectly valid because unfortunately, Cisco certifications are expensive. If your employer is willing to pay for it, then by all means, just go take the CCNA because it will help you step into the CCNP study methodology. And so, uh, that, so again, it's for me, it's, it's that why question. If it's, well, my employer pays for the certs, then just go get the CCNA because you don't know what you don't know until you find out. And there might be an area of weakness that the CCNA will, process will help you identify and will help give you a greater chance of success on the more expensive, more difficult CCNP exams. Yeah, because I can tell you there's nothing worse than going to, like, if you went to skip the CCNA and went straight for the CCMP and then failed that more expensive exam. You know, I mean, it, it, to me, it just would be like the logical progression. But, yeah. you know, um, everyone's situation is different. 100%. Is there, yeah. So, so is there any other tips you have for people that are, like, today looking to get started with the CCNA? You know, where should they start um, studying, you know? is CBT nuggets enough? I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure that's a loaded question for you, but um, you know, is there other things that can be doing in addition? Yeah. Um, so it, it, yeah. I mean, it's a tough question to answer because again, I want to see, like if you come and take a course at CBT nuggets for whatever, anything I teach, which is CCNA or 
CCMP route switch, wireless, all of these things. My goal is always, I want to go as deep as possible, as deep, I shouldn't say as possible. I want to go as deep as needed to pass the exam. I want you to know the material because you're paying CBT money to help you pass the CCNA. And if we can't do that, then, then in some way we're falling short of our obligation to you when you subscribed. But there's also the other side of the coin, which is perfectly valid. You can never get away from it. Just that conventional wisdom of multiple study sources will help. Here's where I draw the line on that. I don't, like, if you want to complement the CBT Nuggets course with the CCNA Cisco Press book, I think you should always do that. Because in video format, I like I can list out the administrative distances of all the routing protocols, but seeing it in tabular format, being able to jot in the notes, being able to dog ear the, the page, like that's invaluable for some learners. Now, if you're not the type that needs the physical tangible, like I always need a physical tangible book. I, I can't stand studying off of PDFs, which is why I have Cisco Press books here, right? Like because <laughs> yes. these are exams that I've that I've studied for and taken and all of these things. And and so I think that there's tremendous value in that. But if it's a, you know, if if you say, well, I, I watched CBT's CCNA course and I still had to go get somebody else's video course to pass, then then I would feel like I'm not doing my job. And so that's what my goal at least is. Again, I, I fully recognize there's going to be something where you watch where I teach multicast. And it takes me two hours to teach multicast and you get to the end and say, but Jeff, you met, never mentioned this one fact about multicast. Um, because that's just the reality is there's so much out there that there isn't a single, in my opinion, a single trainer that's going to be able to give you two hours worth of material or whatever and hit every single thing that you need. And so that's why you 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 complement it with ideally something written that might be white papers. It might be a Cisco press book, but something that you can then go back and read and say, OK, I get it. Jeff laid the foundation. He covered 95 percent of the material and I'm just going to glean a couple of these other details out of the written material and add that to my knowledge. But I want you to be able to watch a course and say, you know, I, I understand it enough that now when I read it in Cisco Press, it makes sense to me because Jeff explained it or Keith explained it well enough that now I understand it and I just need to memorize a few facts or what have you. So I don't know if that really answers your question, but like I, oh, I just, I, I can at least say that's my goal when I create a, a course. There's always going to be room for improvement and, and I'm always open to feedback. It's the UDT. I, I, you know, believe it or not, I do keep an eye on public feedback to know, okay, what courses need to be a little bit deeper? What subjects do we need to go a little deeper? And if nothing else, as I make new content, where can I do this better? I'm always looking to improve as, you know, I'm pretty much, hopefully everybody is who's, <laughs> who's in this industry. Absolutely. Now, I kind of want to actually get to some of the audience's questions. Um, and we have one here that I think gets asked a lot. Uh, do I need to know how to code to be good in a networking role? Oh, boy, that's a loaded question. Um, I'm just going to say straight up, the answer is no. Um, you don't need to know how to code. Now, if you're new to the industry and you're saying, how do I get involved with Cisco networking? And then you pull up the command line interface and you're like, this feels like code to me. Well, yeah, it kind of feels a little bit like code. The configuration of devices can look and feel that way. But it's like, so do you have to learn that? Absolutely, you do. Do I have to learn Python and scripting languages to be a network engineer? No, you do not. Now, if you have coding knowledge, again, this is where it becomes a very branched off conversation. There will be more opportunities available in the industry if you can do a little bit of coding. How much coding do you have to do? You have to be able to program your own applications. I would say no, you know, but having some basic Python and things like that would be, definitely open up um, a lot of experience. I've I've said this before, and I'll I'll say it again here that I think that it's very easy to get caught up in a little bit of that FOMO or fear of missing out mentality, which is that everybody in the industry is saying, you know, automation and programmability, and Cisco has their DevNet and their certifications, and I'm going to get left behind. I mean, in, in my experience, only like the top 10% of networks size-wise are really able to, to leverage automation in a way that makes sense. If you're managing a network of 15 devices, there's not a lot of automation that is going to really pay off there. I mean, when you're talking about programmability and coding and scripting, 
you need like hundreds of devices to be able to make that worthwhile. And even then it still requires a specific type of network. And so do you want to work in that type of environment? If so, get your CCNA. Don't, don't skip to coding, but get your CCNA. We can only study one thing at a time. Get that networking knowledge then just work on that thing, you know, maybe rather than go straight for the CCNP, you spend some time learning some Python scripting and you understand, you play it, deploy it into a lab and you learn, okay, I can actually configure the switch via Python now. And then from there, I can put that on my resume, survive a technical interview about it and maybe get a role where I'm actually using network automation. Oh, that, that is, that is spot on. I feel, um, one, another question is, uh, what resources do you recommend for the CCMP Encore? What do you think about the balance between lab and theory of this exam? Well, um, I recommend a great company called CBT Nuggets for the Encore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm always going to be a little bit biased as far as that's yes. concerned. Um, believe Actually, I my YouTube channel does actually still have some, um, uh, a, at least a, I would call it like a starter pack of CCMP content. So if you want some free CCNP training, you can just search YouTube for Kish Squared. That's my tag. It's been my tag for 25 years at this point. It came, <laughs> um, <laughs> so it seems a little weird, but it's there's a story behind it. But ultimately, YouTube, Kish Squared, and you'll find a bunch of NP content. Um, I think anytime you're starting for a certification, um, spend some time on YouTube poke around, see what's out there. Ultimately, what you'll find with YouTube is it's a great way to get started because there's a lot of free resources to get started, but you're usually going to need to buy a course or pay for a subscription if you really want to use it to pass the exam. So get started on YouTube, pull up CBT. I always tell everybody, look, every, you know, no, no trainer, no learning style is going to work for everybody. You've got to find out if CBT works for you. So if you want to try CBT nuggets, I love that but pull up a free trial. We've got a seven day free trial, try it, make sure the style works for you. And if it doesn't, then cancel and look for somebody who does work for you. If it does work for you, then fantastic. And we're here for you for that. Um, we, uh, as far as the CCNP enterprise network, um, I know Cisco's announced actually a couple new exams with that, but up until then, we've pretty much got every exam. So you can take the ENSLD, which is the design specialization. You can take the ENW LSD, which is the wireless design. Um, you can take the EN auto, which is the automation for enterprise networking. And so no matter what path you wanna go down really, CBT at least has the, um, the portfolio for it. So if our learning style or if our teaching style matches your learning style, then you can come to CBT, pass the Encore with us, pass the um, specialization, regardless of which specialization you want for the most part, and then you'll have your CCNP enterprise networking. No, and you know, I, I, I came to CBT and I guess very early in my career when I was just uh, transitioning into um, IT and I really love the amount of, you know, um, I don't know, it's just it, the way CBT Nuggets trainers uh, approach training and just made it fun and enjoyable. Um, like I said earlier, I, I, I'm not a book reader. I, you know, I can't just sit down with the certification guide and th th that will just put me to sleep. Um, but you know, it, I would sit down, like I said, for those 30, 45 minutes to do, you know, just a couple training sessions. And then I find myself like two hours later, cause I just get sucked into the knowledge. So <laughs> that, that was really yeah. fun. That means a lot um, to you. Absolutely. Now, another question. Uh, how much networking knowledge would you need before taking the course? Uh, some courses require some knowledge. Others require basic networking knowledge as part of the course. Yeah. So I will say, um, given that it's uh, the ultimate course, we were actually to try to make this hit a lot of different levels. So uh, I would actually say that if you have zero experience, then go ahead and try firing it up because the first set of, you know, the first thing that the course the way the course begins is Keith Barker saying, what the heck is networking, right? And <laughs> talking about what it is, what is a router, what is a switch? And so there will be some students uh, who will fire this up and say, I've been in the industry for two years. I know what a switch does. I know what a router does. And so you can just skip past some of that intro stuff. But I, I do think that the course is actually, you know, as long as it doesn't ramp up too fast for you, 
it starts in a really good place. And so I would at least advise, again, that seven day free trial of firing it up and giving it a shot. And, and generally speaking, independent of the CBT course, I would say that if you are um, looking to maybe get into networking or ramp up in networking quickly, you know, CCNA is a big step. I wish Cisco still had CSENT. If you find that CCNA materials, CBT or otherwise, are just like too in, in depth, because the CCNA is too in depth ultimately, then you might consider an A plus or a network plus to kind of get you your feet wet as far as networking is concerned. If you can get the CCNA, it is worlds more valuable than the network plus. And I just say that as a, you've got to be realistic. If, if the CCNA, as soon as we're talking about link state routing protocols and OSPF and all of these things, and you're just like, I have no idea what that even means you know, and, and I'm not able to follow, then it might be worth stepping back and doing something a little more realistic as far as stepping into it. Um, because the last thing you want to do is shoot for the CCNA when you're not ready for it, never be able to get it and never get any certification, right? Like slow and steady wins the race. That's, that's, that should be true with, with your prep as well. Oh, and 100%. by the way, Dakota, can I, can I show off a, a little bit of what we what our CCNA looks like now? Uh, absolutely. All right, is now a good time? Or we yeah, can... now would be a great time. All right, great. Yeah. So I've I've got um. So okay, well let me let me explain this for anybody who doesn't know. So CBT Nuggets has been around for a long, long time. I've lost track. I think twenty five years. Um, <laughs> long, long before I was even in the industry. And I love the story of CBT Nuggets because our owner. Um, he started out by basically saying, okay, I want to teach this like course on Microsoft with, you know, probably like windows 98 back then, right. Whatever it was he was teaching on. And he would actually burn CD. He would record training and he would actually burn it on CDs and sell them online and he'd ship CDs out. Right. And so that's actually how long CBT has been around is video training has been, what CBT does from the very start, even before there was internet streaming. Now it didn't take long for them to switch over to internet streaming, even in the early 2000s, but ultimately it was, you know, CBT has always been video training, which is wonderful and has worked great for many years. But I do think that there has been a limitation with our learning platform, which is that, okay, it's great that I can watch a video of Jeff explaining all of this, but again, like where's that tabular information like where's just the spelled out administrative distances and and you're not going to find that in the CBT app because all we do is videos you click from one video to the next to the next we can occasionally get like hey if you want to download some files a lot of trainers will just link to a github repository or something like that and it wasn't native to our platform so the you know CBT nuggets I since I've, I've been on with CBT I'm coming up on five years I absolutely love this company. They they have a great mentality of always trying to improve their product as well as do what's right for the learner. And, and I don't always see that in the industry. So um, I've loved my time with them and I have loved the fact that they recognize that this video platform is maybe a little limiting. And so we need to modernize our, our platform. So anybody who's been a longtime CBT Nuggets learner knows what our platform looks like. If you don't, that's you know, it's basically just YouTube but even YouTube without really the comments and the written descriptions and all of those things. So it's basically just video to video to video. Well, now we have a new learning platform and we have just kicked it off. Let me make sure this worked. Okay, good. So we have just kicked this off with the ultimate CCNA course. And so what you're going to find is that we have this platform, which is called Adept. So adept.at actually, and you can go out there right now to adept. Um, and there's, unfortunately, there's no access yet if you're not a CBT Nuggets learner. But if you are a CBT Nuggets learner, then you'll be, you know, you go to watch this course. The only way to consume this course is on this new platform. And so what this turns it into is a lot more than just videos. Yes, there's still videos. You're going to click on videos. You're going to watch as I explain things, right? Here's some whiteboarding. Here's some quiz questions, though. Here's an explanation of what the distribution block is and networking, the core block. And, and you're going to learn in this format, getting all the way down to where we review it and you answer more questions. 
And so this new Adept platform, I think, is going to completely, I mean, I, I will say from a training perspective, it has already revolutionized the way that I am teaching. Um, it's, I think, going to revolutionize the way that CBT Nuggets learners are able to consume the content and really absorb it. That you, actually, that was the first time I've seen the the new platform. <laughs> I've been hearing so much about it, and uh, I really love the look of it. I'm actually really intrigued. Um, it's got a very, um, I don't know, friendly interface to it to me, um, mm -hmm. like a very inviting. It doesn't feel like um, a big structured, like scary platform. It feels like just you're you're reading along with the trainer like yeah. you feel more connected i i think um so i'm definitely interested to to look into that some more um now we have a couple more questions i want to get to yeah and this one um always gets me and i'd love to hear just your your uh, take on it ccna versus the uh network <laughs> plus i mean I, i'm sure almost every time um someone talks about networking certifications this question almost always yeah. comes up yeah. What's your take on it? If it doesn't have Cisco in it, don't do it. It's not worth it. No, <laughs> yeah. um, maybe not so much. So the real, I, and I already addressed a little bit of this, I'm sure before the question came in, but ultimately right. the, you know, if you want to talk about levels, if you're starting out here, the, you know, network plus is here I'm trying to oriented my, okay, whatever. <laughs> so we'll just, I'll just do it natural, more natural. So you're starting here. Network plus is here. CCNA is up here. Okay. So if you are just getting started, I usually do recommend people start with Network Plus. If you never quite get to a point where you take the exam and pass it, that's probably perfectly fine. But just especially when you're looking at, if you're looking at CBT, great. If you're looking at other vendors, also great, right? Like when you look at training content, if you're getting an Network Plus course, it's going to be a lot more beginner friendly. And so if you need to start early or start yeah, like like you're like from ground zero, you're like, I just need to learn networking. Network Plus is a pretty good place to start. And I will say that I don't think that there's like there's a big difference between a CCNA job and a Network Plus job. Uh, Dakota, I think you said it already that a Network Plus, maybe you said it about the CCST, but I would say it about the Network Plus as well. A little I'd bit agree. more of a help desk job, a little bit more of a technician job. You're going to be screwing in screws and working with a network engineer. If you want to be configuring network equipment if you want to be have a little bit higher level of responsibility and of course a little bit higher level of pay you're going to want to get the ccna eventually but the network plus potentially depending on your starting point is a great stair step to getting into it no ab absolutely um you know it's Again, I think it's for someone that's maybe just starting out in the field that doesn't feel super confident about their background knowledge in networking. Um, yeah. I think it'd be a great, uh, a great certification. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that I think not enough people do. Um, like when they're going for that, like first, like network engineer, network technician um, interview, what uh, CCNA topics should you be reviewing right mm -hmm. before an interview to make sure you're just kind of fresh in the front of your mind? Yeah. My favorite question to ask any candidate of any level is explain ARP because if you, and, and, and it's so funny because the response is the, the first thing out of everybody's mouth is, Oh, address resolution protocol. And then you hear a silence. <laughs> the next thing out of that person's mouth tells me so much about what they understand about networking because ARP glues layer two and layer three together. If you can't explain ARP, then that tells me that you you might be a really hard worker and there might be, I mean, I'm not going to say you failed the interview, right? But what I'm listening for is as you think through like, okay, can you, can you really understand layer two address swapping? Can you understand that layer three is end to end? Because it tells me so much about what you understand about networking. So I'm giving you a little bit of cheating advice here because I'm not saying that everybody asks for ARP, but First of all, if they do ask for ARP, you better have a good answer for it. Second of all, it will really take you down the path of making sure you're prepared for it. I think making sure you understand how routes get installed in the routing table is big. I used to ask about that as well. Uh, make sure you understand that once routes get installed into the routing table, administrative distance is no longer a thing. You know, if you've got an OSPF route and an EIGRP route, the OSPF route may win because it's most specific route. So make sure you understand 
routing pro choices, routing progressions, administrative distance only determines what gets installed in the routing table, not what's actually used, of course. Um, I say, of course, but, you know, maybe that's news to you and that's great. Um, and, and, you know, subnetting is always going to be potentially a thing if you're, I don't like it as a technical question because it doesn't really tell me anything about your capabilities. It just tells me whether you can do subnetting on paper. And most people will just, like you said earlier, use Google or use a calculator or something like that. Right. But just in case it gets asked, I would also always make sure that you're up on subnetting. So um, you know, I think, I think those are the main things I, I think understanding being able to express the difference between layer two and layer three, again, ARP is a good glue for that, but you know, maybe some spanning tree questions, but if, if the technical interviewer is doing their job, they are not going to try to ding you for, you know, do you, do you have every answer? What I was always interested in as a technical interviewer was the conversation. If you get something wrong, but you're like, okay, well, I understand it's like this and it's probably like this. I might say, well, that's not actually correct, but I love the way that you thought through that, right? If they're doing their job. Now, I've also had technical interviews that the engineer on the other end is like a triple CCIE and they're, they're like looking to say like, oh, well, when you have a virtual port channel and you're getting this kind of error and all these things, it's like, why are you asking me this? Like, this doesn't tell you anything about my capabilities or my experience. It just is going to tell you whether I've ever troubleshot that exact issue. Right. Right. So you can only control the things you can control. I say that a lot to my kids. I say that a lot to people in this industry. <laughs> you can't stress about that. You can't control what the technical interviewer is going to do. You can't like cheat and prepare and say, okay, well, they're going to ask you me about these five things. So I better memorize these five things, but be prepared to have a conversation. And if you don't know an answer, I will say this. Be honest. I it drives me it, one of the biggest pet peeves that I think a lot of technical interviewers have is you kind of try to weasel your way to an answer or a non-answer. And yeah. it was really refreshing when somebody would just say, you know, I've never actually worked on that technology before, but I'm willing to learn it. I would I, I I'm I'm open to that. Like that's actually no, pretty refreshing. It, it it is. And you know, a lot of times, especially when you're going for these entry level positions. They don't expect you to know it all. It kind of goes back to, you know, we can train you those skills, but, you know, being honest and being a good employee, you know, that's, that's something you got to show. And I think the best answer I've ever heard is when I asked, you know, someone I was interviewing, like, Hey, explain how this works. And they're like, they're like well, I actually don't know, but let me tell you how I would find that information out and how I would troubleshoot that yeah. problem. Awesome boom like yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. you know because i think that's the most amazing thing because they are not only like telling you that okay they're being honest and candid with you but they're working you through their troubleshooting methodology so you can see how they're going to actually be troubleshooting these problems because let's be honest there is no experts in this field you know or very very few experts in this field you know um the people that are doing this job on a day-to-day -day basis, we we're using Google on a daily or on a weekly basis, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, you know, being honest and knowing where to find these answers and how to troubleshoot these things is um, I think really key to having a successful career. Yeah. And I will also chime in one, one other thought on the interview process, which is that again, having been there and interviewed people, I've never interviewed a candidate that just, is exactly what I'm looking for. I mean, I I would, you know, I'm looking for a CCNP level candidate for this role and I just can't find somebody who like, you know, I think every job role on some level you're looking for the best you can get. And so what I what I'm where I'm going with this is to say if you let's say you you either have your CCNP or maybe maybe you don't have your CCNP. Well, let me let me stick with the CCNA. Let's say you don't quite have your CCNA. Maybe you're studying for it and you see a job opportunity posted at a company you want to work for, or maybe, you know, through networking or, or LinkedIn or something, you see an opportunity that says it, but it requires a CCNA. Don't hesitate to apply. And, and, and your cover letter, or if you have a contact there, say, I'm working on my CCNA. I'd love to interview for this job. Because they might, I mean, in an, in an ideal, perfect world, that company will hire somebody who already has a CCNA. 
But number one, you might actually be the best candidate because they might interview a bunch of CCNAs who don't do well with the interview. And the other possibility is you don't know if they're getting any interest in this job. And so you might show up and you might be the best candidate. And again, I can't express enough how much it matters for a hiring manager to look and say, oh, well, you don't have a CCNA, but you're really close and and you're motivated and you want to go beyond a CCNA. And I'd rather roll the dice, so to speak. I mean, you're always risking something when you hire somebody, right? You're I'd rather risk risk it on you because you're showing me that you're going to grow versus risking it on somebody who maybe isn't showing growth potential. So don't hesitate to interview for, if nothing else, it's interview practice, but you're never going to be in a place where you're like, okay, I've got it all figured out, right? I've got all the certs I need. I've got all this. You know, you're, you're never going to be there. It's always, right. this is an opportunity. I'm going to go for it. If I don't get it, then it's disappointing and it can, it can hurt, but Look for the positives and and maybe you'll just land a job that you didn't think you were qualified for. That is like, that's such great advice. You know, um, you know, these job applications you see, sometimes they're, they're just purely a wish list or sometimes they're mm-hmm. put together by an HR person that has no clue what the job does. Yes. Apply anything anyways, because the worst thing that's going to happen is they're going to tell you no. Um, and you'd never know when you might be the most qualified candidate to uh, apply. Yeah, you, you took the words out of my mouth. Um, you know, the job I have today as a director of network operation, um, I, we, there was, it came down to a final pool of three of us. There was three of us, you know, that were in the final round of interviews and I was the least qualified candidate. The two other peoples had like master's degrees, they had like tons of previous networking experience and I was, maybe two, three years into the job field. Um, you know, I, I just got a job as a network engineering an engineer not too long ago, actually. And I applied and I'm like, this is my dream job. And, you know, just through the interview process, um, I ended up getting the position because he liked my personality the most. Mm-hmm. I would, I was the best fit with the team. It was a very small team. And then 90 days into that job, I, I, cause I originally applied as a network technician. I got promoted into the director level role wow. um, just because um, I came in with just that going back to that drive, that thirst for knowledge, like having to know how everything worked and taking ownership of every little thing when stuff didn't go right. Um, that really went a long way. And uh, it, it, it was just, it was a blast. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's my dream job. So, you know, um, it never hurts to try to apply. Yeah. You know, as we, as we start wrapping things up, any parting words of advice for us, you know, you wanted to bestow upon us, you know, us peasants, you know, (laughs) you and your great knowledge. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Oh man. We are, we are all in this together. We are all trying to figure it out. You know, I mean, I've got the, we mentioned programmability earlier. I've got that same fear of missing out. I feel like, boy, the more I teach PIM multicast, right? Like if I, if I'm just teaching, some of these things. Am I learning the newest, latest, and greatest? And so, yeah, we are, we're all in this together. You never stop learning. And I think that some of that can be platitudes, but the reality is that if I look back on my career and I've had what I would consider to be a successful career, I've I've advanced, I've gotten promotions, I've gotten salary increases and taking new jobs, and I'm doing exactly what I've always wanted to do, right? All of that was just back to me as a, I know nothing. I didn't even know who Cisco was. What was I doing? I was just taking one step forward at a time. And it's hard to look out 20 years and say like, okay, well, where do I want to be in 20 years? It's hard enough to do that at five, you know, five years out. But it's incredible to me how quickly you can grow. And yeah, that's IT. That's That can be not IT things too. But but sticking with the context of of IT, you want to step into networking. I can't tell you how how much progress you will make if you can just dedicate that five to 10 hours a week for the next year, six months, whatever it is, you'll know more than you than, than you might expect. And, and we, we all are going to always have that, okay, the more I know, the more I know that I don't know, right? Like that, that's always going to be a thing. There are things that I just, I know I don't know well enough. Anytime, I have, I have never sat down to teach a course and thought, oh, good, I know everything about this. There's always, I'm looking at some blueprint item on a, even a CCNA or, or, or a CCST, and I'm like, 
I haven't looked at that in a long time. I'm going to have to research that or this is new. I've never seen it before. Like we're all, we're all trying to kind of get this together and, and you can't, you, you're, you're never going to know it all, I guess is what I'm saying. And just because, and you're, you're going to find that you've got these insecurities. We all have them. You, you're going to feel like, okay, but again, like we just said, I, I would interview for this job, but I don't, I don't know this. I don't have this certification. I don't, I don't have this experience. Neither does anybody else who's applying for that job. Everybody's going to have holes in their knowledge. Everybody's going to have holes in their experience. There are things that there are experiences I wish I had that I don't have. And, and sometimes it's, you know, people will tell me like, boy, Jeff, I wish I had your level of knowledge or I wish I had your experience. And I'm sitting here thinking, I wish I had yours because you've managed this in the past and I've never done that in my life. And, and so always come back to process oriented thinking right? I, I might not get the CCNA for a while, but if I'm studying a little bit every day, if I'm prioritizing it during, if you are in IT and you want to grow again, what I, I was, I was just hanging access points. And if I had just been like, you know, I'll just hang access points all day and go home and I'll be happy to do that. Then maybe I would never have advanced. But when I would have to paste a configuration into an access point or a switch, I would go to the engineer and say, hey, you know, like, what is this line of code or configuration doing or whatever, right? Like, look for those opportunities. And if you just have that growth mindset, again, process oriented thinking, it's I'm going to just going to grow a little bit every day. I'm going to grow a little bit more this month. If I can be 1% better by the end of the month, 2% better by the end of the month at a technology, it adds up over time and it adds up a lot faster than you might expect. That that is just rock solid advice, you know? Um, yeah, it, it truly does just add up, um, and just continue to be curious. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, I, I try to learn something new every day, like not necessarily every day. Cause there's those days at my job that just are crazy, <laughs> but at least like Life one happens. or two things a week. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have to know how it works. You know, I'll go mm -hmm. down the rabbit hole on setting up and like right now I've been, uh, elbows deep in the IPv6 project where we're deploying oh, it out to mm. the public because I work at ISP. Um, that's totally different than, you know, your standard deployments. Um, mm. So it's been a, a fun learning process for me just to bring those skills um, back up to snuff to be able to deploy that. So um, just staying curious. Um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, you taking the time to come on the channel. I want to be respective of your time. We're already at an hour here. Um, if okay. people want to, you know, obviously they can go to CBT Nuggets to learn, watch your wonderful training. If people want to kind of learn more about you or connect with you, where can they find you? Yeah, so I'm active on both Twitter, X, whatever they're calling it these days, as well as LinkedIn. So you can find me, Jeff Kish, it should should I should pop up? I mean, there's probably ten Jeff Kishes on LinkedIn, but you'll you'll recognize the the beard and the bald head probably. <laughs> um, on 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 Twitter and on YouTube, I am again Kish Squared, so that's my last name K I S H, and then spelled out S Q U A R E D. It is a mathematical reference there, just a inside joke that you know, my brothers and I started. But um, uh, and yeah, I think I think that's the best way. I mean, you can. If you have any questions about CBT or, you know, again, anything about any of these subjects, I do try to respond to LinkedIn and Twitter messages. So feel free to reach out, ask questions. I'll do my best to respond. And um, obviously, like you said, also, of course, CBT Nuggets, we, we've got that new CCNA course on Adept. It's a fantastic experience. Um, would love to have feedback on that, by the way, as well. I know our CBT team is is looking for that level of feedback on Adept for those learners who are jumping in. I mean, it's it's a new product. It's going to probably have a few bugs or a few things that could be better. So you've, you've got those thoughts, then let us know. But jump into CBT Nuggets. Again, try it. See, the, do that seven-day free trial. If it matches your learning style, then then dive in. And I hope that, you know, we're, we're going to give you a good experience and help you get that CCNA and whatever your certification goals are. Absolutely. And I've actually put links to that. Those platforms are already down in the description uh, below the, Thank you. the new Fantastic. CBT nuggets. Absolutely. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and until next time, keep learning. Awesome. Take care.